guys, do you like my vague Sailor Mars cosplay? I've got my long straight hair, my little red gym, my red earrings, and obviously my red shirt. Well, you know, Sailor Mars, she didn't wear glasses, but she probably would if she was 40. Quick disclaimer, there are multiple sides to every story. I'm sure you've heard the old saying, there's your side, my side, and the truth. Most of what I'm about to say today is hearsay, as I did not live through it myself. If you happen to know anyone mentioned in this story, please do not harass them or bother them in any kind of way. These are real people who had to live through this, and everybody pretty much just wants to be left alone. I'm also going to be using this word a lot, allegedly. So if you hear a lot of weird noises, I have eight cats, three of which are four months old, and they just run and run and run and run some more. So back in 2013, 2014, somewhere in there, my friend Bernie worked at a place that served donuts and sandwiches. And his job was to get up super early in the morning, like 3.30 in the morning, and go in and get the donuts ready. And once the donuts were baking, he would start prepping the sandwich station, like getting the condiments and the meats and all that good stuff out ready to serve customers throughout the day. This job was really hard on him because Bernie has incredibly flat feet. And at the time, he didn't have the proper shoes or proper insoles to make it so that he wasn't in agony after being on his feet for sometimes 12 hours a day. I don't know if it's normal for people who work in donut slash sandwich shops to work that many hours a day, but one reason that he did was because there was a lot of turnover at this place. There were a lot of call-ins, no call, no shows, things like that. And he really needed the money, and he was getting more than 40 hours a week, so that meant a lot of overtime pay. But in addition to his flat foot issue, he also had an extreme sensitivity to bleach. Now, obviously, we're all sensitive to bleach. It's chemical. I will get a chemical burn. But with Bernie, even diluted bleach would cause him to have rashes and blisters, and it was horrible. So his boss got him some gloves that went all the way up to his elbow. Think the mom from Dexter's lab, how her gloves went all the way up to her elbow. That's how Bernie's gloves were. And that was great for a little while, except after a month, they started to break down because of the chemicals. So he said, hey, do we have any more of these? No, I only ordered the one pair. Okay, can we get some more? No, it's not in the budget. And then he said, well, can I just go buy my own? No, you might buy the wrong kind. Like, for some reason, she just refused for him to have any other of these long gloves to keep the bleach from touching his skin at all. Pretty much everybody would wear, like, the little gloves, like the food service industry gloves, to not only make the food, but to also do the cleaning. And this, I think, is fine for most people. But for him, the bleach, you know, if it got up past that point, it would burn him. There was this one week and a half period where there were a lot of no calls, no shows, a lot of people calling out sick, and a lot more business than usual because it was summertime. So he was putting in 12-hour days, and he did it 10 days in a row, and this man was in agony. His feet were killing him. His hands were killing him. His hands actually, at this point, started to look like raw hamburger, like it was bad. And he'd gone to the doctor, and they're like, well, you just need to stop touching bleach. Yeah, I know but it's my job. Not a, not a great situation for Bernie. Thursday night, he he's like, I'm off. I have a three-day weekend. I can relax. I'm not doing anything but sleep. And I was like, that is a legitimate life choice, my dude. Then he gets a text from his boss saying, hey, so-and-so is going to be out sick tomorrow, and I already have plans, so I need for you to come in. And he's like, I'm not going in. I'm not doing it. I need, I need a day off. I've worked a 10-day stretch with 12-hour shifts. I need time off. And she's like, well, I have plans tomorrow. I'm going on a picnic with my girlfriend. So you need to hurry up and, and get yourself together and get in here tomorrow morning. And he just said, I am not going in tomorrow. And he left her on red. She kept blowing up his phone, but he refused to answer her. I don't blame him. I probably would have done the same thing. But yeah, eventually she stopped messaging him. So that was Thursday night. He didn't hear from her again all weekend. And he went to his shift that he was scheduled for on Monday morning. And he said as soon as he walked in, he did get a really strong smell of bleach. And he thought, you know, it's not that unusual because they always clean with bleach, but it was stronger somehow. He went in, he did the donuts, and started to prep the sandwich station. Now the sandwich stuff comes in like these containers with a lid on them and they would just store them in the cooler and they'd take them out and then they'd put on their food service gloves and they'd start to like churn stuff up so that it was mixed well. 
And then he grabbed the pickle container and he set it down and he said the bleach scent really hit him when he took the lid off the pickle container, but he didn't think anything of it until he put his hands in and the pickle juice went up into his glove and he said it just burned like nothing he had experienced before. And he's like, okay, what is going on? And he smelled and that's where the intense bleach smell was coming from. It was coming from these pickles. Somebody had put bleach directly into the pickles. Hurried, he took his gloves off, he washed, he threw all the pickles away because they were not salvageable at all. And he texted his boss and said, hey, someone poured bleach into the pickles. This could have been very bad, very dangerous. He, if he hadn't noticed, what if these pickles had been served to customers? They could legitimately have killed someone or at least, you know, poisoned them severely, caused major damage. He cleaned everything up, made sure everything was safe and sanitary, and went about his shift. Well, at the end of the day, when he looked at his phone again, his boss had replied, Next time I ask you to come in, you will. Yeah, she didn't outright say, It was me. I poisoned the pickles. But you could kind of infer that, yeah, she did it. So, needless to say, Bernie was pretty freaked out at this point and uh, immediately quit his job. He's like, nope, nope not dealing with that. So when he's telling me about it, it's the same day. And I said, we, ha we need to complain to somebody because she could have killed somebody. And he's like, I agree. So we call corporate, but the corporate phone number just keeps prompting us to go online and fill something out. So we go online, we find a form that we type everything out, all the horrible things that she's ever done, click submit. And then it comes up and says, thanks, we'll forward your complaint to the manager of that property. And we're like, no. <laughs> we did see her there a few more times. We didn't really know what to do beyond that. Because I mean, what, what, what are we going to do? Tell the police? Like, there's really no proof at this point. Bernie cleaned everything up so he could go along with his day. At first, he thought, surely it's just an accident. Fortunately, he was able to find a new job pretty quickly. But the story doesn't end there. In 2016, this person murdered her boyfriend. Now, of course, the rumor mill has various stories on what happened, but the most common story is that uh, she and her boyfriend and his family and some of their friends were at a party and they got into a silly argument about something and she grabbed a knife and stabbed him in the leg twice. His two daughters were there and they grabbed the phone, they called 911 and he got up and he stumbled out to the driveway. He was gonna get in his truck and try to drive himself to the emergency room. But as he was out there, he collapsed. And she apparently followed him out the whole way, telling him he was faking it. It wasn't that bad. She barely stabbed him. She only a little bit stabbed him. <sighs> Can we all just agree that there's no such thing as a little bit stabbing somebody? Like, if you stab someone, let's just assume you mean to cause grievous bodily harm. You don't just a little bit stab somebody. Collapsed in the driveway. He bled to death and he died. She had nicked, um, I believe, the femoral artery. So in 2019, she did plead guilty to a Class B felony murder. Some people who, I guess, are close allege that she had zero remorse for this murder until she found out that she could get a lighter sentence if she pled guilty and acted remorseful about it. So it looks like she'll be doing about 15 years. I don't think that she'll be eligible for parole. I'll have to go read the old newspaper stuff on that. But uh, yeah, I guess the big old red flag was there. You guys have any big red flag about jobs or bosses, coworker stories? If, if so, let's hear them. I want to hear about it. And write it in the comment or link us to one of your videos where you tell a story. Um, I would love to hear it. I love listening to stories like that. If you're into this, feel free to like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I, of course, will reply to comments because I love to chat. Yeah, that's all for today. Um, feel free to like, subscribe, algorithm, etc., etc. You know how it works. I'll be back next week with another vague grown-up Sailor Moon cosplay. I'll see you later. Bye!